Hi, in this video I'm going to show you how to handle errors in C-sharp programming. They're called exceptions, and we use things called try, catch, and many others. So let's see what's up ahead. So here's the index of what we're going to see. We're going to try and catch, which is a way to check for errors before they crash your program. We're going to look at the finally command. We're going to make exception filters so we can customize what kind of errors we catch. And then finally, we'll talk about throwing a custom exception. And so all of those things are handling errors in C-sharp code. My name is Shad Sluter, and I'm a professor of computer science and software development at Grand Canyon University. You're welcome to watch over my shoulder as I teach my classes. So most of the videos you see on my channel are used in a course called software development. So let's get started with our examples with try and catch. So I'm going to paste in some code here into a console application. And you can see that it is asking for us a number. It's going to do a read line and parse that number into an integer. And of course, this could become a problem. If somebody types be something besides an integer, the program will crash. Let me demonstrate. So the first time I run this program, I'm going to operate as expected, and I'll just give a real number. So four is my input, and then it says here that we have 16 is the square of this number. Now the question I have is, what happens if I don't put in a four or an integer? What's going to happen? So let's run the program again, and this time I'm going to put in something besides an integer. Okay, the program's up and running, so instead of a number, I'm gonna type in one, O-N-E, so this is really a string. So when I press enter, I will get an exception or an error in my code. Let's see what it says. So you can see the error pops up now and it says here on line 11 that the input string was not the correct format. And so I cannot parse a number into an integer unless it actually is a number. And so a string doesn't work. Now we don't want our users to experience this kind of a crash where there is an ugly error message. We want to give them a graceful message and perhaps the ability to try again. So let's come back into our code and I'm going to insert the literally word try and some brackets. And then after the uh, section, I'm gonna say catch and put some more brackets. Now the code that is going to be tried is this line or this group of lines. So I'm going to cut them out and move them up. So this is going to make its best attempt at doing the code. Now the catch, we can put in down here a message and we'll just put in console write and uh, we'll say something went wrong. So we don't tell the user what went wrong, but something did go wrong. Let's see what this does. Okay, here's our chance to test it out. So it says, please enter a number. I'm gonna put in some string and press enter. And now we should see the message that says something went wrong. The program still stops, so we need to make maybe another option so that the user can correct it. So let's move a few things around here so that way we can do a multiple attempt. So I'm going to start at the beginning and come up with here with the number int num, and I'm going to say that this equals, uh, let's say, negative one for a default value. Now down at the bottom here, I'm going to have to take out the integer part because I want it to refer to this int up above. Then I'm going to put in a while loop. So a while loop is going to repeat something until a certain condition is met. So I'm going to put in the while loop in around everything that I've typed so far. So the while loop will surround the try and catch. So I'm going to put in here while num is uh, less than uh, zero. And then for I'm going to put the instructions in here to say put in a positive number just to make it so I can use my conditions here. And let's see how this runs. All right, here comes the program again. I'm gonna put in an invalid number and you can see that it's gonna say something went wrong and then it immediately asks me for a positive number. Well, let's try a negative 99, which seems to work. However, uh, the, the exception wasn't handled, but it still wasn't the correct instructions. So now if I type in some 88, I can get a square. And now this time the program is over. So uh, it is going to repeat until I give it a positive number. All right, let's come up with another example here. So we're going to have a math operation here that could possibly cause an exception. We're going to do a divide. So anytime you divide, you know you can't divide by zero. That's mathematically unallowed. And so this is opening up a problem that could cause an error. So it says here, please enter a number to divide by 100. And we're going to parse it. So this, first of all, could cause a problem. 
Then the second one could be a different problem where we have a div divide by zero. And then uh, we're going to print out the results. So how am I going to handle these uh, checks? So I'm going to put in here a try. And we're going to try to do both the enter and also we're going to do the division problem. And then we're going to do a catch. So now there are two possible errors that could occur. And I'm just going to put a generic message for this first attempt and say something went wrong. Let's run this and see if it actually does catch the errors. So here goes the first one. So what could go wrong? If I put in here something like a string and press enter, I'm going to have something went wrong. So which line of code caused that problem? Well, it was the parse statement here. And so this parse caused the catch below. Let's run it again, and this time let's put in a zero. Okay, the program's up and running again. Let's put in a zero for our divide 100 by zero, and we should see another error message that says something went wrong. Well, we've got the same error message for both problems. Now I'm going to delete this catch statement and I'm going to replace it with a whole bunch more. So let's see, I'm gonna scroll up a little bit and paste. And now I have several catch statements in a row. So each one of these catch statements is going to handle a different error. So the first one here is run this code if an exception occurs that is related to divide by zero. And so there's an actual object called ex that is passed on. And so we know that this is the type of problem because of this exception has been raised. So we give an appropriate text message. The next one says invalid operation. The next one is format exception. And then another one is just generic. So let's see what each one of these will do. Okay, so it's time to test it out. Now we've got uh, the same question here. Enter a number to divide 100. And so let's put in a zero to start with and let's see what kind of an exception is thrown. So one of these cases should be shown. And sure enough, it says, cannot divide by zero. Please try again. Hey, let's run the program again. So this time, instead of putting in a zero, I'm going to type in a string and press enter and see we should get a different one. It says, not a valid format. Please try again. So the example here is to show you that there is more than one type of error and you can catch and handle uh, exceptions as they are classified. And so that makes your program a little bit more intelligent. Now let's sw swipe over here to the Microsoft documentation. So I'm looking at the uh, docs here on uh, looks like .NET. And they have an article about how to handle exceptions and how to throw them. So let's, let's scroll down here. And I wanted to point out here a list of common exceptions. And so you can see that there's something called an index out of range exception. So that's usually with arrays. By the way, you can check out the uh, video on how arrays work if you want to know how to handle those kind of exceptions, uh, null pointer exceptions, and other things. So there is a lot of different types of exceptions, and you should look them up depending on what kind of program you are writing at the moment. OK, let's move on to the next example. I'm going to paste in some more code. And this one's going to demonstrate how to throw an exception. So what is a throw exception? Well, let's take a look. First of all, you can see that I'm defining a string and it's null value. So that's going to be the problem. I'm not going to allow this to be null. I'm going to try print this thing, which is a function down below. And then when there is a problem, I'm going to print the exception message. So we're going to feed in this ex and then take off the message part. Now, where does that message part come from? Well, that's this custom exception that we're going to write. So print message comes down to here. And uh, we're going to accept this parameter. And we are going to say if the problem is that there is a null reference, so that means we're not going to allow the string to be undefined, then we're going to say name is null. And then we're going to print it. So let's see, that's not supposed to be name. That's supposed to be STD, I guess. Let's see what happens when I run this. OK, so I ran the program. And immediately, I have an error. So what exception was thrown? You can see down here that I have the yellow line highlighted where the program stopped and the exception has a message called name is null. And so the fact that I didn't give it any a value up here caused an exception to be raised. And so you don't just have to react to exceptions. Sometimes you can define them and create another handler somewhere else in your program. So that's a little bit more advanced than perhaps just the beginning. But be aware that tries and catches and exceptions are an important part of making your program a good experience for your users. 
If you would like to learn how to program in C-sharp and make some games along the way, then check out the playlist called C-sharp Beginning or Beginning C-sharp. If you would like to be more advanced and maybe build some intermediate software, then check out the Level 2 playlist, which will show you how to create more advanced programs. And pretty soon, you will be a professional and maybe even start a career.